you know, that another super quotable line in this battle from Drake, Kendrick just opened his mouth. Someone go hand him a Grammy right now. I love that one. It just keeps happening. Yeah, you know what? Kendrick fans do too. Because Harvey Mason Jr. said, hey, it is eligible for a Grammy. I I don't see, you know, and I don't want to use the Grammys as a, a validation factor in terms, or just any awards in, in general to validate hip hop, right? Or validate anything happening in, in the rap or beef or in the culture in general. But receiving an award for that, like somebody even put up the idea of him um, winning another, uh, what is it, the Pulitzer? Pulitzer. Or is it the Pulitzer for the show itself? And for the and for bringing all of these opposing neighborhoods together on stage, and for having such a cultural event, for having something you know a historic event the way it is, you know every time he and it's and it's almost like Drake predicted this in in on accident. He became that soul raven on accident and predicted every every part of his demise because he just keeps saying things like, for instance, you rapping like you're trying to free the slaves. I can't imagine saying that in a room full of my peers and them being like, <laughs> hey, bro. I imagine my OGs like, shout out to like a glass of Malone, pulling me by my collar and be like, what are you doing? Right. Do you understand what this moment is? Do you understand how tone deaf that sounds? Like, even even if you think you, like, I remember he said something on that Scissors song. Um, you know, she had me in whips and slaves. chains like American slaves. Whip and chain you like Americans. He dropped an American in there. What are we doing? What is he talking about? And then old girl Camilla, he just released that. I didn't know she had issues. So it's just like you keep keep showing me who you are. I'm going to eventually believe you. Even if I'm like, no, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. You show me who you are. You show me who your friends are. I think it's fair to believe that if you yourself, maybe you have blinders up. If you don't care enough to see and say, you know what? I wanna know why people have such an issue with this. I just haven't seen an ounce of humility or accountability this entire way. And I get it, you're in the middle of a rap beef, you gotta talk your stuff, you you wanna come out and still look like you're unscathed, but it's like, I just feel like we're gonna get the most victim, and I'm saying this, this is me, the most victim uh, interview in about a year with Gail King about how Kendrick the bully and that song was so scathing and how it it was so hurtful that he would do that and pe- people are around here you know see i'm a f- around around and at bar mitzvahs and, and, and at birthdays and at bands like, like i could see that conversation happening but it's like but we're not going to talk about how you violated verbally his wife you you insinuated that his partner dave free is the father of one of his kids and we don't sweep that under the rug because you have you are now having a moment where you're under the microscope. And I think that that's something that I even feel the responsibility in in media, and I feel like you do such an, a remarkable job. I learned from you, and that no, 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 let's keep these other conversations in the forefront, so that this one doesn't get railroaded by, you know, people trying to pull on your heartstrings because they're in a vulnerable moment. I mean, there's so much. There's so many things that scream colonizer. Right, and I know that's a harsh word for people to hear. I know a lot of people don't want to be called a colonizer. They want to think of hip hop as this huge tent that's open for everybody. Yeah, everybody is welcome as long as you show respect. I mean, if you look at that Family Matters video, like people keep telling me that's the best track he dropped. That is the most disgusting, tone deaf, disres- culturally disrespectful shit. Um, might be ever from Drake, and he's got a lot of things like that, but. Right. Like in that video, he's he's showing off his G-Unit spinner chain. He's showing off his Pharrell chain that he bought, his Tupac chain that he bought. Like, dude, that is like straight colonizer behavior. Like that, he's looking like Christopher Columbus in that video, showing off these artifacts that he's gotten from the American slaves that he that he's been hanging out with and co-opting their music. I mean, that is wild to me as a, like looking at that video again, the more I look at this battle, the dude's got his mom right. saying he doesn't say the N word. And then the next, and he steps, he cuts her off and says, nigga, I said it, I know that you're mad. No! Like, who, who disrespects them? That is not, that is not like us, right? Like you get to like, 
after 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 you tattletailed on Rick Ross for saying something racist. You call Rick Ross to the same mom. <laughs> the world that he told his mom that rick ross was racist you know what i'm saying like i mean along with the, in, the trying to free the slaves line along with the american slaves line yeah and he's and, and and all of his fans are like he's black his dad's from memphis i'm like well, why didn't he put him at the beginning of the song why didn't he talk to his black dad and say yo dad they up here coming at my n-word car what's up what we gonna do because yeah, have his dad on there because he's not culturally american he's not culturally you, black you, American. you know what to change that if he had a black woman in his life that didn't lie to him because because i feel like that came in the form of my grandmother my aunties that came in the form of a homegirl of mine who will call me out right my, my wife is a black woman she'll tell you she'll tell me she'll tell me right up like stop wearing them pants they ate excuse me woman <laughs> right I, I accused her one time of, of using my toothpaste and she and uh i use like the the toms and she's like nobody want that hippie toothpaste i said you keep me grounded that's when I fell in love with her too, by the way. I don't feel like he has anybody in his life, just from the outside, that is going to tell him the truth and he's going to accept it. Maybe maybe Jay Prince, I, I assume, but I don't know how much time they spend on a daily basis, but it just seems like he just, the, the circle he keeps around them just does what they can to not lose their position. Right. Or as Kendrick insinuated, they already hate it there and they're just comfortable and they just stay in this place but i'm like having just 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 having elders in general right i say black woman because i just love the, the strength of black woman and the way that she words things is a way that i can relate to just having somebody in your life that that's going to hold you accountable you have different conversations because i don't know once again i say like i'm not some i'm not big as nothing like that but i can tell you this i am rich and relationships and people that I can bounce ideas off of. Like I talked about it earlier, Glasses is one of those I would call. I called him recently, right? Just having a general conversation about music career. Somebody that ain't gonna lie to me, but I think a lot of human beings, I think it's just a microcosm of how in society now, people are more comfortable with you lying to them in their face than telling the truth to them in their face. They look at that as you're being offensive. They look for grounds to cancel you on that. So when I look at Drake, I just feel like, it's so crazy that we've seen the colonization behavior, right? And this is my theory too about the whole 20 versus one. Could it be possible that you've done the same thing to 20 people and they've had conversations amongst themselves and said, hey, bro, after he came and collab with you and you're so grateful for the collab, hey, did he kind of run your, with your style on the next album? He did that to me. He, wait, wait, he did do that to you. Hey, Sap, yep, he did it to me, don't even ask me. He did it, and, and he talked about my wife. At some point, you can't do all that and expect that nobody's going to say anything. But thing, one thing that I learned, and I'm going all over the place, but one thing that I learned from watching the TMZ doc on Diddy in the situation, one of the people that were accusing him said, it's all about timing when you're dealing with somebody this large. People in the industry know, and it's too easy to call them cowards for not saying anything, but they also know that if you stand up and say something at the wrong time, that's the end of your career. That's the end of the people that you provide for because you're going to be blackballed in such a way that you won't have the opportunity to tell your story for the further. Now, because of the timing, now look at everybody else who's saying, okay, I'm in the shadows for a long time, but because of this Kendrick situation, I can finally speak on this is what happened when da 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 So timing plays a big factor in this. I don't think it's a I hate drink. I think this is just, um, this is just karma for maybe perhaps the way that he has conducted business with a lot of people. If it's 20 V1 and it's like that, I, I would do some soul searching if that was me in that position.